Would you stand for the call to worship? We're just going to sing the chorus to our God is an awesome God. Shine, Jesus, shine. Let's try that again. <laughs>
Thank you for your singing today. Several announcements to be made today, one of which is, since we're this close to Valentine's Day, sweet for the sweeties, you'll want to find those in the youth center. They'll be there, opportunity supporting United Methodist Women's uh, Mission Funds. Uh, and, you know, forget worrying about diet and all those kind of things. Lent's coming, you know. Lent's coming. Just enjoy yourself today. Have a great thing. Do buy something for Valentine's. Have a great time supporting United Methodist Women. You're going to eat it anyway, aren't you? You know, do it for a good cause. I also want you to sign up for Wednesday night. The cook team is out of this world. It is fabulous. Uh, they're going to let me be a part of them, but they're great. And so, uh, 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 but you see the menu in there. We're doing uh, baked spaghetti uh, casserole. And no, we don't start out with a jar. We start out with pans. So it's going to be great. The food is going to be good. The brownie is going to be good. The fellowship is going to be good. Afterwards, we'll do Bible study around the tables. We're working on lectionary stuff. I appreciate those who helped me with some wisdom and insight and scripture passages. And you're going to hear some of that today. But that's a way for us to sort of read ahead, which is part of that preparation we do uh, for what we need to do. Several meetings this week, Children's Council today at 3 p.m. Pray for them. Children, if you're not there, pray for them. That's important. We're all part of this. This is not somebody else does children's stuff. If you read the Bible, and we're about the Bible, that talks about our responsibilities with children. And I'll say a little bit more about that and what's happening. Also, Board of Trustees meeting this week, Finance Committee is meeting this week. We've got a Tuesday night, and we've got a, um, and then we've got a Thursday lunch meeting with uh, the, the Finance Committee, trying to uh, to work in ways that help people schedule, and that's extremely important. Big event in the district today. District conference is going to be in uh, in Chipley, and I, I say that we are in the Mariana Panama City District. Now, there's a secret to that. Not everybody remembers we're in the Mariana, Panama City District. So it's know that, you know, the south winds hold uh, a, a lot of sway. But it's our opportunity. Uh, I've always felt like when I'm in the district that if we want more things up here, we've got to support it. But also it's important because there are things we're going to learn. For instance, uh, Chris Perry and Spencer Turnsley are going to be teaching the introduction to the five practices of faithful congregations, which is a... One of the studies that we're going to be doing, five practices of faithful congregations. We want to talk about reaching out to people and, and connecting with folks. It's a tremendous thing. And, 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 and Spencer Turnsley is going to introduce the Wesleyan Way. Two opportunities there. Jeffy Stevenson, well beloved in this congregation, is going to talk about imagine no more malaria. What's happening there? And an opportunity to learn and grow. And, and it's important uh, for us to have that opportunity. Uh, Gary Daniel, the district superintendent, is going to teach. Now that we've made our major decisions, the staff parish committee is going to learn how to do that, how to be a staff parish committee. He's going to be teaching that and giving some pointers. And so we're working through some things important. So 3.30 to 5.30, there'll be a worship service. We have to approve the budget. Some of us have to be reelected as officers in the district. And uh, uh, all those things are an important part of life of the church and who we are and what we're doing. And I know, I don't know, please fill out the attendance pass. It's very important that we do that. Uh, and that's designed to move up and down the aisle so that everybody gets welcomed and spoken to and cared for. Uh, we're working on a, uh, some other things that will help us in that. And, and uh, we don't have it yet, but when we do, we'll talk about it then so that we have them. Let me say just a, a, a word. Uh, please see where we are attendance-wise. You know, the 10% of what we take in every week goes to our, our conference mission funds. We're trying to get on the front end of that instead of the back end of that. How many of you got your, your newsletter in the mail? How many got your newsletter in the mail? Okay. If you didn't get a newsletter, let them know in the office. I'm just saying that. Sometimes, you know, this is the mail. I'm not saying it against the post service, but sometimes in the mail and addresses and those kinds of things. When we sent out an announcement about e-news, how many of you get an e-news from us? How many of you get an e-news? Okay, make sure we've got all the right addresses because we're trying to get information out. And Jim Roberts is saying, if you don't have an email address, you've got somebody who can 
get that information and, and get it to you. And we're going to try to send those out on Thursday, Friday, maybe print some and put them around. But that's another way for us to get information out that's very important. Uh, sometimes we'll send out uh, 150, 200 of those, and, and only about 50% of them get open. So, you know, go look at your spam. You may have a lot of stuff from us. It's very important. Uh, but that's one of the tools we have for communication that is very important, and I want to make sure that we're good about that. And then let me say something from a personal standpoint about some matters here. Um, we're trying to, we, we ask you to put out surveys. Uh, we put out surveys, ask for your opinion about what, you know, where we are worship-wise and, and what's going on and what we'd like to get. And we're trying to get some results of those surveys out to folks. It's interesting reading that. Um, very interesting reading that because we're, we're all over the place. Uh, we've got a multiple opinions. So, uh, interesting, you know, when, when you think you know where you are, you don't always know where you are. So we're trying to work on some, some possibilities, and everything we've talked about until it's approved by the church council is thinking out loud. Thinking out loud can be changed, directed, moved around, up and down, and those particular kinds of things. But we're looking at some creative ideas, and, uh, you know, the bread is not baked yet. It's still in the process of rising and being formed and shaped. So don't think we've come to any conclusion. We've talked in the church council. We, we tabled it. We've got some more discussion we've got to do. But it's rather interesting. It, it, you learn a lot from that. And I, I just want to say that. I also want to say, before I say the, the next piece I say, uh, we don't have as much staff as we used to have. You understand that. That means sometimes that things don't happen as quickly as as you might think, and we don't get everywhere, we don't get everywhere that we got to go and as quickly as we, we can. So just understand that. We're, we've been used to having two clergy and a lot of other staff, and it's been easy to cover things, and, uh, you know, it's got to create more hours in a day. I wish you had. Uh, I'd take them up, but just be patient with that and understand that that changes a few things about how we do what we do as far as caring for folks and getting back to folks and returning phone calls and those kind of things because guess what? There's a lot happening in this church. I just want to say that as a point of importance. Also, um, I want to say this today. Um, we haven't said a lot about it. Uh, Wade Hudson's here today and Wade is going to Wade has decided to make some changes in his life and look at some different directions and he's exploring lots of things and so this he, he's ending his tenure with us and I want us to uh, I want to ask uh, Wade if he'll just come on up he's going to probably read the Old Testament lesson for us today too but I want to ask if he'll come up just a minute um, and let's ex express some appreciation and blessing in the way We're going to pray for Wade and Rain Cole as we, as we turn in our, in our prayer list. Let's turn, if you will, in that prayer list. Uh, and again, here's another place. If you've got folks' names you want to put on or take off or put folks on for a short amount of time or whatever, let us know so that we can, uh, we can do that. Um, because you put the names on, we don't know sometimes information and in the office, and so you let us know. So these are our prayer names or concerns, and there are certainly many others, and we can all think of other names of people, and we have them on our private prayer list. So let's pray silently, and then I'm going to leave some time. Before you, we pray for those of our church family, those who are enlisted, and those who are on our private prayer list. We pray for those in the nursing home and the homebound. 
And we pray that you will bless them and give them your strength and love. And then we pray for those extended family and friends because people here believe so much in you, O oh God, and, and the power of prayer that they put these names with great love and grace on this list so that we would pray for them. And then we pray for those who are deployed and their military families. And we pray that you will give them comfort and care and grace. We pray for the leaders that are listed on the back of the bulletin. They're not all the leaders of God, but they're, they're, they've got important responsibilities in the life of the church. And so we pray for wisdom and guidance and your Holy Spirit. Again, not that we always live by Robert's rules of order, but that we live by the gifts of the Spirit. And that we serve faithfully. And we live out our baptism. And we let Jesus show they have carried that burden, that responsibility for all of us to lead us in those directions. And we pray for Wade, and we pray for Cole, and we pray for Lorraine, and we pray for the journey of their life. We're grateful for the moments they've been here with us and the way they've touched us and they've walked amongst us. And we pray, oh God, that as he journeys down the road, you will go with him. Give him wisdom and guidance and strength and grace because, oh God, we are all your children. And we need all that we can receive from your hands. Pray for our bishop and our superintendent, those who are gathering for district conference and all the matters that will take place there and for those who are traveling. For all of this, oh God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. so much for uh, your support and the kindness that you've shown to my family and to me. Um, there, are, there are lots of encouragers in this congregation. Lots of people that are positive, that have, have always been positive, and, and I think, you know, all of us are that way. And, uh, and so I just I appreciate all those positive words that, that, have, that have been said to me. And, my family and um, thank you. The, uh, the Old Testament reading is Isaiah 58 verses 3 through 9. Why do we fast but you do not see? Why humble ourselves but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast days and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly, and your vindicators shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer, and shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, and the speaking of evil, the word of God 
for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you stand the hymn is number 465?
that we want to let our light shine, but to do that, we got to be plugged in and turned on. All right, let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you that you have given us the power to let our light shine. Help us to be remembered that we got to be plugged in and turned on to you. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Hey, y'all can go to children's church with Miss Elizabeth now. And she's got a wonderful lesson planned today. Thank you, Christian. I appreciate that. Thank you. And that's just come forward for the morning off.
indeed, O oh God, out of our gratitude to you, out of the call to be salt and light, may these gifts, O oh God, radiate from this place around this world and carry your gospel. For we pray with faithfulness in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel lesson for today. It's so great when you have the opportunity to read from the Sermon on the Mount words that are important, familiar, but speak to us. Chapter 5, verses 13 through 17. 13 through 16. Hear the word of God. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I can see the two, two corrections in the bulletin, and I didn't catch this one. Uh, trustee meeting listed, it should be listed at 6 instead of 6.30. That's the normal time trustees meet, so 6 o'clock for trustees, need all the trustees there. And it's not Blake Donaldson, it's Brady, who's one of our acolytes today with Sydney, and we're glad that he's with us today. Let's pray. <laughs> O oh God, the God of life and the God of love, who looked upon us and said, let there be light, not just in our world, but also in our souls and in our hearts. We pray this day for the power and presence of Christ in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. There's no more powerful image of Jesus in Matthew's gospel than that of teaching. And so frequently when people come up to Jesus, they will say, Rabbi or teacher, and they will say, and then they will ask their question. And so we have this long period, this long period of teaching where Jesus calls his disciples and then he, he sets the stage for all kinds of things when he talks about who they are. And then he begins to teach. And the longer you listen to the teaching of Jesus, the greater still you get that clear focus on what Christianity is supposed to be about. It's what makes Jesus up for us. It's that, that sense of teaching. I remember going into an office when I went to visit some seminary students, and I went to the office, and when I was there, somebody else had been in it, but I go in, and there's this huge frame, huge frame, and there's all these words in it, and, and the, the words are black and red, and the red, remember when we were growing up and we got those Bibles and had the words of Jesus and they were in red. Remember that? Anybody remember those red words that were in the Bible? I mean, this thing was huge. It was, it was, it was huge. It was all words of the Sermon on the Mount. So we get these, this teaching from Jesus, and the crowds came around, and they began to look at him, and Jesus, what did he say to them? He said to them, you are the salt of the earth. And then he said, you are the light of the world. Two metaphors, two words, two phrases that begin to define what, who Christians are. Notice that Jesus didn't say, you are to become the light of the world. Notice Jesus also didn't say, you are to become the salt of the earth. What Jesus was saying to us is, this is who you are. This is your identity. This is what you need to say about yourself. And this is what you need to, what you need to offer the world. And then he says, you don't know one lights a lamp and puts it under a, a bushel basket. 
You can't light a light and, and hide it, can you? You just simply can't. I remember one time I was in a movie theater, and I don't talk about current events, but I was in a movie theater and uh, probably 25 years ago, and, and some guy near the backside thought he could, you know, as the lights were out and they were showing all those previews, just thought he could, he could light up a cigarette. So he pulled his lighter out. You could see it everywhere. I remember when we got flashlights the first time, always like that, when you want, to, you want to find places to shine the light where it's supposed to go. And so you look under the bed, and you don't put no socks under there, and you, and you look in the closet, and you look out, and then you can't wait until it gets dark till you go outside, and then you go to shine it up a tree, and you want to see how far that light will shine. It's a powerful, powerful image that we have. Now flashlights are just simple things. You get them on your, your iPhones or everywhere else, but, but I remember when it was a big deal when you had a flashlight. And you just put those batteries in there and it would work. Or we take it for granted when we turn lights on. Or when you've got places where you just walk in and lights with motion sensors come on. Jesus lived in a dark world. Physically dark, there weren't many lights, no electricity. You had little oil lamps, and they did what they could. You had candles, and they radiated what they could. And so when he said, you're the light of the world, that was important. But so light polluted, we don't understand. That doesn't have the same analogy to us. It doesn't speak the same to us. But what Jesus was saying is, you're the salt of the, world, of the earth, but what, what happens if you lose your saltiness? I had a mother one time who, you know, I, I was parking and walking into church, and it's, I have to admit, it's very simple for me. I just get ready to come, you know, and this mother came, and she had a van full of children. You know, I, 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 those are the people I, I, I admire. Boy, when they come to church, and you get ready, and you bring them, and you come to church, I had a van full of small children. And we got there, and we come by, and she said, pray for me. I lost my religion this morning. <laughs> Of course, I prayed for the folks at children's ministry because they were going to lose theirs too, so I knew it was coming. I said, no, no, you didn't lose your religion. I said, you might have misplaced the salt this morning, but you need to find out. I was preaching on the Sermon on the Mount. But Jesus was also giving phrases to people who were martyrs who were under martyrdom. You see, you're not light only when the conditions are right, and you're not salt only when they're right. You, that, that defines who you are, and that's part of the witness that we have in this faith that we proclaim. It's what the world is, wants to see of us. Uh, you don't put it under a bushel basket. Why? It makes practical sense to us. But what Jesus was saying, you don't want to light a light and, and, and be the light of the world and then hide it out. Just, just hide it. Light needs to go in places that are dark, where there's darkness and bring light. And that's who we are and we're supposed to be. You know, We're supposed to be the kind of people when we walk into a room, we light up the room. Not to snuff out all the energy wow. in the light. And so we get these powerful images from God, and they, they speak to us as Jesus begins to speak and teach, and, and they remind us how significant our witness is. I told the folks on Wednesday night when I was living in downtown Mobile, I was, I was in, in downtown Mobile at St. Francis Street, and, and years ago before the large buildings were there, the ships would come by, and when the ships came by, they would look for landmarks, and one of the landmarks was a light cross. We don't always recognize how steeples and towers and those kind of things on churches are landmarks and you see them at night and you get to see ours when you drive by. Like you get to see so many others. But those lights had had, had a great reputation for a long, long time. Not just the ship folks, but now that it was all blocked by hotels and people in offices and, and I didn't know. I, I didn't know the lights had gone out. And so people were, were calling the church and saying, what is it going to take to get the lights back up? You know, what is it going to take? I came to the hotel, and I come to a convention, and I come to my office, and I look out, and you're supposed to be the church of the light of the cross. It's a cross, and the lights were up there. And, and people would send money when, whenever the lights were out, saying, please repair the lights. We, we want to see the lights. There were all kinds of lights downtown, but the important one was the church of the light of the cross. And so I was talking to one of my maintenance guys. I called the trustee chair. Not like Lisa, good chair, like Lisa Douglas. He said, okay, 
uh, let me know when it's handled and what, what it's costing. So I talked to the maintenance guy. He said, well, I got a, I got a bad back. I should have, it should have been a case when something was up. He said, so I'm going to need you to help me. So, okay, so we go to the, to the upstairs and we go up to the tower. And um, the church is 163 feet up that the cross is. And so we have to go walk up the ladder on the tower. So we're walking up the ladder on the tower. I tell you, being a light is tough. And we're walking up, and all of a sudden he says, don't move. And he shines a flashlight, and the walls are covered by wasps. This is the wintertime. They're covered by wasps. He said, don't make any noise. They'll be on us. And so we had to get, take care of the wasps. It was colder. Uh, it was not as good a day. And so we climbed up, and we had the bulbs, and I didn't know what we were doing. You know, I was 20 pounds lighter, and I was, I was 20 years younger. So I don't know, you know. So I go up, and he says, right, this is what you got to do when you climb up. You got to sit here on this wood. This building's over 100 years old. And you got to take your feet and you, and you pull them across from you and you got to loop them up under this board. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you're sitting there in that kind of position. He hands you the light. He says, okay, I'm going to open the doors. And he opens out the door like this. And he says, all right, what you got to do is lay back 160 feet. You got to lay back. He says, I wouldn't look down if I were you in case you dropped the light bulb. And you got to reach up and you got to change the light and you just pray that it doesn't come loose. Because if it does, if it breaks off at the socket, I'm going to give you a potato and you got to pull that out 160 feet up. Well, the wind was blowing and it was cold and it was blustery. We changed one. I said, well, that's take care. He said, no, no, while we're up here, we're going to change the other side. Go over the other side and have to lean out and reach up in order to change that light. And then we got all these people call in and say, thank you for being the light, the lighted cross. Thank you for, for letting the light shine. Thank you for doing that. A simple act of discipleship. I wanted to invite them to come lay out over 165 feet and change the bulbs. And then when we struggle financially, I want to just take the bulbs out and see how much money came in. But that's, nobody would agree with me on that. We're identified. We're identified not by just what we believe. We're identified by what we do and how we let that light shine and being the salt of the earth and how grateful I am for some of the salt of the earth people that I have had throughout my ministry. People like Evelyn Cave, who, by the way, was chair of the church council at that church, and people like David Morrell, who kept me out of trouble when I was serving my first church. And, 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 um, and I can just go down through the lines of, uh, uh, you know, um, James Powell, and I can, who is a private, and I can talk about Kathy Updegraff, and there's several of you here. Some of you are going to get there, I know, but, you know, I, but, but that's who we are, salt of the earth. That's what makes this business that I'm in so great is that you meet so many wonderful people along the way who are exactly the way Jesus described them. Now, some of us are trying to get that way, trying to understand and become who we're called to be. My reading this week, I was reading by uh, Palmer Chin Chin, interesting name of a guy. He wrote a new book called The Barefoot Tribe. Isn't that interesting? The Barefoot Tribe. That catches your attention. What he was saying about the church, and he does ministry to the millennials, that group of folks that are younger than me, uh, that everybody's clamoring for to get into the church. He does all this ministry with the millennials, and he, he's making a, an interesting call to the church. What he's saying to the church is that the age of reason is over. We're now in this great world of empathy, and that's the new currency. You see, what Jesus, when he was talking about the salt of the earth, he wanted us to know that in the world where he was, that's how they paid Roman soldiers. The currency was the salt. So if you got a lot of salt in your house, you were rich in the moment. But the new currency is empathy. It's what you have and, and how you share that with folks. And so in this barefoot tribe, he begins to say some words. And my goodness, he, he sort of slapped me in the face. He said, what do you want to be known by? How do you want to be the light of the world? And how do you want to be the salt of the earth? What do you want to be known by? He said, we're moving from a world where uh, it's not here I stand. It's here I go. He's sending the church on a hike. Not telling them to run away from him, but sending them on a hike into the community to find out what's going on. And he said, if you want to be, have currency in the world where we are, 
You better be concerned about some folks and not just yourself. He said, you don't want to be known just by the styles of worship in your, in your buildings. And you don't want to be known by the way it looks inside. He said, you want to be known by your empathy toward two groups of folks. One is the poor, not letting the government take care of it. That's not what Jesus said. He just didn't say, when you were poor and hungry, I sent you to the government agency. <coughs> the second one is to be willing to sell out for the children. <coughs> He said, we are in a world where there's danger and trouble and difficulty and sometimes it's at home and sometimes it's a, it, it's a bully and sometimes it's somebody else. And he said, we ought to have a sign on our building that says, children, this, we are about children in the gospel. And if a child's in trouble, they ought to be able to come to us and they ought to be able to come to us and find a place of safety and sanctuary because children are in difficult places in life. And if we don't raise them up, then we're not following what Jesus had to say when he brought the children And then he goes on to say, and don't just talk about it. Nothing with God happens according to Paul and Chin Chin. Nothing with God happens without passion. Nothing without passion. So what do we want to be known for? How do we want to be identified in the world? How do we want to be identified in Mariana? How do we want to be identified by Jesus? How do we want to be identified with each other? Not that we pick the most convenient time for all of us, but that we put the most important lives in the presence of Jesus. And so the call to us is to be the light of the world. We're polluted by all this light, but the light that restores life, that redeems people, that brings hope and joy and love, all of those things are missing in the sea of light. People are looking for the light, the authentic light of the world. Right, we don't even have to think about it. We just have to remember our baptism. And remember to be salt. Just be the salt of the earth. Not because you have to be trained to do that. You don't need to go to a district conference to do that. That's to help us figure out how to touch other people. It happens in those moments of our relationship. When we become real and authentic in the presence of Jesus. Remember your baptism and be salt. Let's pray. Not easy, oh God. Not easy. Always be the light of the world. Not easy to be the salt of the earth. But you have identified us in these two ways. And you have called us to ministry and to service. And because of our baptism, let us remember we are salt. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Turn now with me to who we are and another part of our identity with the words of the Apostles' Creed, number 881. Will you stand? We affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come. 
the judge, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We say to you this day that if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, we'd love to pray with you about that. Or you need to reclaim this identity that Jesus had about you, or you're concerned about where the church is going and how we're going to, how we're going to move forward in the future, or if the doors of the church are open to you for membership, is it today that you feel a compelling movement of God's Spirit to come and join all those options we give you this day? As we sing together a very sacred favorite hymn, number 420, Breathe on me, breath of God, sing it with joy.